Okay, uh, good morning. Let's have a class. Uh, we basically will finish the material of the exam one at lecture four and uh, also attached to the exam one practice exam on the campus already. So you can see that's all the uh, exam practice. Uh, we will talk about every single question on Tuesday and next Thursday will be our exam one. Okay, so uh, you do that. And we talk about on Tuesday, and the key we'll put on the campus on Tuesday evening, that you can study about that. And also, um, the TA, Ms. Carly Long, will have a special section if you need help for, the, uh, for study. Usually, exam one is not that difficult uh, compared to the exam uh, two, three, and afterwards. So let's first of all finish these topics. This is we are going to talk about the biofilm. So we mentioned it briefly, but here we're going to talk about biofilm. So first of all, everybody should know, when we have a broth, let's say a neutron broth, we'll talk about the bacterial media real quick. Of okay. a neutron broth, we grow, let's say, E. coli at 35 degrees Celsius, 24 hours. And these type of the bacteria growing there, we call it vegetative cell. And you can understand it, this is just a common bacteria. So we call it a vegetative cell. Now biofilms, what happened is different, is a matrix of a group of bacteria usually is in poor nutrition environments, poor nutrient environments, uh, and you can understand is that they, they are stacked together. And when they stack together, they certainly do some cell to cell communication. And this is called the chlorine, um, chlorine sensing. Okay, so that's what will happen. Um, the real life always sees the bacteria is biofilm. So the biofilm is much more dominant compared to vegetative cells. And the vegetative cells most likely is in the lab. So what happened, let's say we are in a meat plant, and we are processing the meat. And very often happens is that after processing, you have to do is a very good sanitizing. So we have a standard Sanitizing operation procedure. That happens in every meat plants, an acronym we call it SSOP. We have to follow. And if one day some people forgot to clean it clearly, then what will happen? The residue bacteria and the residue, we call it a food soil, because more or less you have nutrients left on the cutting boards or the processing board. And uh, we know the bacteria on the beef, they are naturally have like 1,000, 4,000, 10,000 cells. In. So in those bacteria could use the residue, moisture, water, and nutrients on the processing board and they started to, uh, started to stack together. Like what happened there. Some of them will be dislodged, some of them will be, become a cluster, and basically they can glue together by polysaccharides from them on, and then they can communicate to each other, we call it a coring sensing. And then later on, have a matrix. The matrix will become heavy and heavy. Now, what is the bad thing for this biofilm? They are resistant. 
to antimicrobials. So I have some experiences before, and there are some of the research paper also saying, for example, we're using chlorine, could do a sanitizing. And for the VH2 tube cell, we using 50 parts per million, 50 ppm, could kill them. But for the biofuel, even you are using 500 ppm, which is 10 times more than the original dose, even if you're using 1,000 ppm, sometimes the biofilm will still survive there. So that is the issue for the food industry is bothering them a lot. Now in order to study the biofilm, we need to see their morphology, we need to see their mechanism. So since it's a matrix, certainly the microscope we should use is laser confocal microscope and scanning electron microscope because both of them could see the 3D images of the matrix of the biofilm on the photo surfaces. Okay, so this is something about the biofilm. We just very briefly talk about that. Usually on the photo contact surfaces in a poor nutrition area, if you do not do a good job of sanitizing and cleaning, the matrix will be formed and they will be resistant to the antimicrobials. Okay, today's big topic, we're going to talk about the culture media. There is lots of things we're going to talk about. So, bacteria culture media. And we're going to introduce you some of the culture media and also in the lab we're going to do something. Okay, first of all, based on their chemical ingredients or chemical composition, a culture media could be separated into defined media and complex media. So what means defined media, which means every single chemical is well described. Well, what is complex media? Well, we will say other than that. is complex media. Okay, this definition looks like it's very simple. Every single chemical, ingredients, or we say composition in the media is well described, including their name, their amount. So, let's just give you an example. If I have a neutron argument, I have a neutron blast, let's say. Okay, what is my ingredients? Water, beef extract, and we have salt, and we have pepton, we have trapton, uh, oils. Okay, let's just put a mound there. If I say 400 gram. 10 gram, of course you need agar. Okay. For us we don't need agar, so we just skip it. Let's say we have a 5 gram this, 2 gram that, 3 gram that, in a 500 ml base. So the question is, if I write down this, is this a defined media or complex media? That will be the question to ask you first to think about. Then, lots of you will tell me this is a defined media because you already listed all these ingredients and this is the amount. But that's a very tricky question. It is a complex media. Why? Because we don't know exactly what are the chemicals inside. For example, beef extract, what is that? That is basically is you have a beef stew you have a beef chunk, 
and put it in the water, you boil it, you generate that bunch of liquid, that's called a beef extract. But we don't know what exactly the chemicals are. So the chloride, we know the chemicals, pepton, and trapton, this is basically is protein, or polypeptides. We don't know exactly what's ingredients in there. So, whenever you see the bottle of a median based on the label, you see pepton, trapton, beef extract, they are complex media because they are not well defined. Now, what are the examples of a defined media is you look at the top. So you have this M. Um, this is a very typical media, is BG11. When you look at the ingredients here, you have potassium phosphates, magnesium sulfide, calcium chloride, citric acids, ferric ammonium citrate, citrate, EDTA, sodium bicarbonates, all these are well defined. They are named, they are amount. But when you look at the below, you have a pepton beef extract, glucose, uh, Di potassium phosphate that's defined by trapton, that's not. So this is a very good slide, which is tells you the difference between a defined media and the synthetic, which we all call the synthetic media and the complex media. And if every chemical, the single chemical composition is well defined or well described, we call it a defined media, a synthetic media. Whenever you see beef extract, a pepton, trapton, these, which means a bunch of the things together, we don't know exactly what the chemicals it is, it's a complex media. Now, by the way, we mentioned the biofilm. BG11 median, this is a median really good for growing biofilm because it's only the chemicals. They lack the high nutrition ingredients in their life, like beef extract, like pepton. So this slide tells you very simple. What are the peptones? It's a protein hydrolysis prepared by partial digestion of various protein sources. What are the extract? From beef and yeast. And what are the agar? It's polysaccharides from seaweeds. And uh, Dr. Fanny Hesse is the first person who find that. Okay, so. That's the media ingredients. This is the first category. Uh, second category is relatively easy based on the physical. Okay, based on the physical status, we could differentiate them into solid media. We know you have a slant and agar plates. This is what we already did in the lab. And we also know we have a liquid media. Let's say neutron loss. However, there is another status we haven't mentioned is called a semi-solid agar. So semi-solid agar, usually is composing about 0.5% of the agar, and they are used for testing is motility. So we got to do a very important test called the SIM test, the sulfide indoor motility test. That will be doing the lab. We are using semi-solid agar. The reason is, once we see the semi-solid agar, we inoculate the bacteria. If the bacteria stay right in the middle, there is no motility. If you see the bacteria goes everywhere, that means they have a strong motility. Now, once you have a strong motility, it's corresponding to the structure they have, flagella. So basically, it is like a petrochemical. Okay, that's something we'll do in the lab. We just want to mention here. This is easy to understand. It's a physical status. Now, the difficult thing is the third topic. We talk about the function, which is from the functional standpoint, we can have different bacteria. Uh, bacterial media. So the first thing is support media. Uh, I would say the definition will be simple. Support media is support vegetative cell to grow. How many they can grow? They could grow roughly 10 to the power of 8 cells per ml. 
like we did in the lab. And the, the good example will be tropic soil grass or other. And also we did is nutrient grass or other. So that's support media. Okay, support media, there is one thing we want to emphasize. Does not mean everything can grow. There's one exception is fastidious bacteria. Except for fastidious bacteria. Which means the bacteria is very picky. So for example, if you only use tropic soil broth, the neutral broth, capital factor cannot grow. Even if in a micro environment, allophilic environments, this guy cannot grow. They need some special things. Okay, therefore we come into a second category called the enriched media. Okay, what means the enriched media? The enriched media is the the support media, basically. Add certain ingredients. Ingredient. Add a certain ingredient. Dramatically, in which media could reach 10 to the 9 or 10 powers cells per ml? That's dramatically. Now, what are the enriched media we're going to be using? A very typical enriched media using the lab is blood agar. Blood agar is containing 5% sheep blood. They are adding to PSA base. This means tropic soil agar base. So you are preparing tropic soil agar or tropic soil broth, add agar, then you autoclaved and then you're going to add 5% sheep blood. Now why do you use 5% sheep blood? Because in 1970s, people find the physical and the chemical characteristics, uh, basically chemical characteristics of sheep blood is very similar to human blood. So that's why they are using 5% sheep blood widely in the, um, in the microbiology area. So in which media is like that? Next one, we want to talk about something is a little bit tricky is differentiated media. Okay, that's a differentiated media. Since we are talking about blood agar, we want to mention this real quick. Blood agar, we have 5% sheep blood. The bacteria can grow dramatically. But because there is a blood, so based on the bacteria, how they do the hemolysis of the blood cell, you have a different results. So the definition for biofilm, uh, for the uh, differentiated media is based on biochemistry reaction, biochemical reaction, you basically will see the color change. And this all the time is either hemolysis of the blood cell or you see the pH change, you're going to add in the pH indicator. 
Let's say lots of the time we use phenol red. So based on the blood agar, the hemolysis, we could differentiate them into alpha hemolytic, which is incomplete. Incomplete of hemolysing of blood cells. Hemolysis of blood cell. Therefore, the colony on the blood agar it is dark green. The second one we call is a beta hemolytic. What is the beta hemolytic? That is complete hemolysing hemolysis of blood cell. Therefore, on the agar, you will see on the blood agar, it is transparent zone. Now, certainly, we also have a gamma hemolytic. This is simply, we will say, nothing happens. And in the clinical area, it is very important for different type of the hemolytic, because it could be differentiated and faster tracking a different bacteria grow on the, the blood agar. So this is give you some of the example. Alpha hemolytic streptococcus ammonia. Beta hemolytic streptococcus pyogenes. So blood agar certainly is an enriched media and also it is a differentiated media. Now here we have something interesting. This guy. That's called a chocolate agar. This guy is interesting. So first of all, chocolate agar, there is no chocolate there. This is not you prepare a medium, put candy ball, and then you melt it, it's going to become chocolate. So you say it's a chocolate agar. Not, not that way. Chocolate agar, it should be say chocolate like agar. This is blood agar heated at 70 degrees Celsius. Then the blood going through the reaction and turn to brownish. Brownish color. They could have been caramelization or maybe a little bit of may other reaction that turns brown structure. That's called a chocolate light agar. Then people think you are very smart, so take this one off. Then become chocolate agar. But keep in mind, this is not coming from chocolate. Because it turns brownish, looks like chocolate. But it is important. Why? This used to grow fastidious bacteria. Lots of the fastidious bacteria grow on chocolate agar or grow modified chocolate agar, which is the chocolate agar you add certain other ingredients. Okay, this is called the differentiated media. Next one is a little tricky, is selective media. So we're going to turn this one out. We left a little bit space here. We're going to talk about the Select media. We already talked about support media, enriched media, differentiated media, and we're going to talk about selective media. So the next one, selective media. Which means certain ingredients favor certain bacterial growth. And others will die. So a very simple example. 
tropic soil agar base at 100 parts per, mi per million penicillin. Then most of the bacteria will be cured. <coughs> Only one type of the bacteria will grow is penicillin resistant bacteria. This type of agar is a selective media because they select penicillin resistant bacteria. That's a very easy example. To understanding. But here is something we also want to emphasize. Lots of the time we are working in the lab and we find the selective media is not that selective. Especially you do soil sample, environmental sample, and get a fecal sample from animals or from ingredients, you will see it's pretty messy. So why? Because in the first class we already mentioned we only know 5% of the bacteria. So 95% of the bacteria, we don't know where are they, where they are come, and what are they. They could be naturally carry on the plasmids, which is have penicillin resistant gene, and become penicillin resistant. Especially these days, the antibiotics is abused, and we have a big antibiotic resistant issue. So that happens in the lab all the time. When you put your target in, Penicillin resistant bacteria on the penicillin agar does not mean they only gonna grow because other bacteria, especially coming from environments, they still can grow. It depends on the sample. Okay. Next we want to introduce you a very important media we're gonna mention all the time. We're gonna use in the lab is Macanti agar. Okay, here is something we want to say. We introduce these individuals. We talk about liquid media, solid media, um, semi-solid, defined media, complex media, and then we go talk about support media, differentiated media, enriched media, selective media. In the real life, if you pick all those typical media, it will be the combination of all these combined, which means they are not only fit one category, they are fit multiple categories. So that's why sometimes it is difficult to understand. Okay, let's talk about this Makanki agar. Since it is a Makanki agar, when you look at the ingredients here, you see pepton, you see bio salts. And this is typically is a complex medium. There's no question about it. And since it is agar, so it's a solid medium. So from chemical and the physical standpoints, it is easily understand. Now let's talk about the functional. We say Makanki agar is a selective media. Why we say it's a selective media? Because it has a very important ingredient, crystal violet. That is why Makanki agar looks like purple. Okay, this is go back to you, Graham Stan. If the bacteria grow on the agar, they have crystal violet then only one group of the bacteria will grow is gram-negative bacteria because gram-positive bacteria, their heavy peptidoglycan will be attacking by crystal violet so this ingredient is a selective ingredient because of the crystal violet, Makanki agar only gram negative bacteria can grow. This is the reason. The reason crystal violet attacking gram positive bacteria cell wall peptidoglycan. Remember 
remember when you do the valve, when you do the gram stain, we have heat steaming or we have a heat fixing. So we put the dye there. But also you need to know the dye is reacted with the cell wall structure. At the same time, it's killing the bacteria. Although it's already been killed by the heat fixing. Okay. Also the bile salts. The second ingredient is bile salts. The bile salts is also going to kill some bacteria. But I don't want to emphasize this too much. For Makanki agar, more important is crystal violet. That's a major selective ingredient. Second, you see the ingredients is macros. This is a differentiated medium. Why this is a differentiated medium? Because they have lactose. Okay, lactose is a sugar, is a disaccharide, which is composed by glucose and galactose. We'll talk about it later on. If bacteria in a mixed media have glucose and the lactose, they were using glucose first, then they use lactose, have a dioxy growth curve, this comes out with very important stuff which is called a lactooperin. You learn in your genetics class, it's tricky. We'll talk about it in the exam three. But here we want to talk about it. If in the media you have a lactose, certainly bacteria could use it or not use it. This comes out with lactose fermentation positive and the lactose fermentation negative. So if it's a lactose fermentation positive, on this other media, the bacteria color looks like colony, looks like pink. And otherwise, it is colorless. Now why it is pink? When you use the lactose, you do the lactose fermentation, what will generate? It's acid. When the acid generates, the pH will be decreased. So we need a pH indicator. The pH indicator here is neutral red. So here you see neutral red. That is a pH indicator. And as the low pH environment, especially as it comes out, this is showing you pink color. Otherwise, it is colorless. So, when you see Makanki agar, in general, it is Makanki lactose agar. But people think you are very smart. They took this off. Then become Makanki agar. Why do we want to say this? Because in the food microbiology 